Hope you're feeling proud about your little potato. Today is the day that we're going to add limbs. So limbs are the next thing. Um, I'm gonna talk specifically about legs in this video. If you have wings, that's a video I hope to make very soon. If you're one of my students and you're doing a bird, we'll talk about it in class and we'll cover that there. I also have a teapot video in which I talk about limbs that might be helpful for you to watch as well. Take your time, be observant, and enjoy. I have slipped and scored and blended my front legs on. I've added a little bit of clay on the outside here so they kind of come out into the body. There's a lot more detailing that I need to do on these legs, but until I've got the back legs on, the tail, and the head, I'm not gonna do any more details, even though it's super, super tempting. We wanna have all the parts together so we make sure that we've got the proportions correct. And until we can see everything in comparison to everything else, we don't know that to be accurate. We're going to try our best to get things the right shapes and sizes, but we're not going to be perfect. So let's hold off on those details I know you want to do and wait till we get everything back on. On my back legs, I'm going to do what I tell my students to do, and that's to really study the anatomy of your animal. So I'm going to look at the back legs of my fennec fox. I know there's a hip joint here, a knee, and this is the ankle. So the body, the bone comes out here, then there's a joint, another bone comes back, another joint, and then the small bones of the foot coming forward. You can see the knee here, the feet, here's the knee in the top, um, and then the foot coming in um, behind those front legs. The other thing I wanna notice is the size of this. I notice that this top hip joint and the upper leg is quite large, and you can see it here too, right? So hip, knee, and then the different foot parts here. Um, so when I make this, I don't wanna make it just a coil like I did on the front legs, which are rather skinny. I need to make parts that are more like this. I wanna show the fullness of that hip and really accentuate the fact that that's a large muscle there. There's also a lot of furry, fluffy fur, so I wanna make sure I have enough volume in that hip. So what I'm doing instead is I'm making thicker shapes that fit the shape of each joint. And I'm gonna do the joints each of the sections separately, it helps to accentuate the fact that there's a hip here, a knee here, an ankle there. Um, I'm gonna build all my parts at the same time as each other, so I make sure that they're the right shapes and sizes, and it's a little easier to have a symmetrical piece. Um, you know, I don't worry about perfect symmetry. I'm not taking measurements on something like this because animals are not perfectly symmetrical, just like we're not perfectly symmetrical, but I wanna get close. I wanna feel like I got the right idea. And don't forget to look at things from different angles. I'm starting off by doing the largest part, which is the hip joint. And then I'm slowly making the other joints of the piece. So the lower leg is what you see there. And then finally the foot. If you look, these leg shapes are very potato-like. They're large. They're not perfected. I'm just trying to get the volumes correct and the shapes the basic shape of the volume correctly. It's kind of like when you're drawing, you always start with very basic shapes and go from there. Then I'm slipping and scoring the parts together and then blending, trying to create more accurate form. So as I continue to build, the form gets more and more accurate. Now in this step, step when you're blending your piece together, um, you really wanna think about where does this attach and how does it blend in to the piece. I don't want to blend this knee to the body. I don't want it to look like the knee is attached to the belly or the same with the foot. So when I'm blending this in, I want to make sure I have it in the right position. Really, the place that this blends into the body is the back of this hip here. So this is where I'm going to spend my time really blending. And then a little bit on the top here, it kind of feeds into this upper body. Make sure you blend your appendages in well. You don't want your leg to look like a shelf stuck to the body. And then what I'm gonna do in all those places it doesn't actually connect, I'm gonna come in with the tip of this tool and I'm still gonna blend that space just to make sure there's not a crack that's gonna develop there. Here I can see this sticks out way too much. It still looks too square. So I'm gonna use the heel of my hand and just try to blend that in a little bit more, something with a little bit more force. And I might need to come back in and build this hip back a little bit more um, as I move into the next step. Here it got a little squished down. I'll come and open that up again. 
Remember, you're working on getting the right volumes and basic forms here. And again, just like the front legs, there's things that I know I'm going to need to change over time, but I'm not going to really stress about that right now. I just want to get these on. I want to get it pretty darn close. And then once I've got everything together, then I can go in and I can modify and make everything right. Whoop. When you're putting the second piece on, make sure you take the time to line it up from the front, the top, the back, and the side to make sure that everything's in the right spot in comparison to the other leg. And again, a lot of slip um, in that space just so any cracks that I have between those legs fill in. So I'm going to make sure that the knees and the feet line up correctly when I look at it from the top. I'm going to look at it in the back and make sure I've got the right height. Do the same thing from the bottom and the front. Once I've got it where I want it, I'm gonna apply a little pressure. And then I'm gonna blend where I know I need to blend. Take your time in this step to make sure you've attached all of your limbs really securely. Blend things on all the way around. Use plenty of slip. Fill cracks as needed. And then once you've got things secure, you're going to use your reference images and your tools to make sure that you've got the right basic forms and structures. You're not looking for details yet though. So I'm just comparing it to my picture and I think I need more height on this upper hip and that's something that I can add. Um, I have a tail that connects back here and wraps around his body coming forward. Um, I'm gonna wait to connect the tail until I have the head on and I've modified these legs and I feel pretty good about their shape and size because once I pull this tail around this side, it's gonna be really hard to fix my any kind of leg issues I have. So I'm gonna wait to do the tail until after the head. The other thing that I'm gonna wait to do for a while is the paws. Um, if you have feet or claws, don't add those right now. Those are one of the last things you're going to want to add. Any small little details like that, anything that's really small, thin, delicate, you want to wait to add until the end um, because they're going to dry more quickly than the thicker, heavier clay on the rest of your animal. Um, and if you add them now, they'll dry completely and then they won't stay on the rest of the piece. We need to add those towards the end. Um, the other thing you're going to want to be careful not to do is you don't want to rock your piece when you're picking it up. So don't rock it forward. It's going to keep bending these paws. It's going to round the bottom off. You want to make sure if you pick your piece up, you pick it straight up and put it straight down. Don't rock it around when you're working on it if you can avoid it. So our next step is adding the head and then we're going to start to work on details, facial details, body details, finalizing our forms. Once that's done, the next step we do is textures and then those tiny little extra bits. Have some fun, take your time, lots of comparison to both your sketches and your reference images.